Our first story though is a great example of the perseverance and success of the National Phosphine Resistance Monitoring Program and how a world first was created. Tony Crowley reports from WA. All around the world, where evergreen is held in storage, insect contamination is a problem. Insects can reduce stored grain's quality, reduce the price growers receive for their grain, and in Australia, result in grain deliveries to export facilities being rejected if live insects are present. The way to get rid of the insects is to use fumigation, but the insects have been fighting back. So in Western Australia, there's the rust red flower beetle that is very common and has started to develop strong resistance. But there's also the lesser grain borer, which is uh, a much more damaging insect. What these insects are developing resistance to is the chemical that grain growers have come to rely on most. For more than 40 years, phosphine has been a safe and reliable fumigant for the control of insects in stored grain. 80% of all stored grain is fumigated with this chemical but insects are starting to build resistance to it. So when a previously resistant strain of the red flower beetle here in WA was eradicated using phosphine, it was a remarkable result. No one in Australia, quite possibly no one in the world, has scientifically documented such a result before. While many grain producing countries rely on phosphine to disinfest their stored grain, Australia is the only country with a national phosphine resistance monitoring program a program supported by the Grains Research and Development Corporation and the Cooperative Research Centre for National Plant Biosecurity. Western Australia began monitoring for phosphine resistance in the early 1980s, some 15 years before the national project commenced. It was to be the foundation on which this remarkable achievement was built. The lead up to the Wuban eradication was the detection of strong resistance in rust red flower beetle. Now we'd been expecting that strong resistance to develop for, for some time because it had been found in the eastern states and we'd noticed in Western Australia through our monitoring that weak resistance was gradually increasing and we know that when weak resistance becomes common, strong resistance soon arrives. Three years ago near Woburn in Western Australia's northern agricultural region that strong resistance arrived. An isolated insect population had built resistance to phosphine because of poor on-farm storage hygiene and an inadequate fumigation process. The farmer had been fumigating incorrectly for about 11 years. Uh, simply punching holes in phosphine containers and hanging them in the headspace means that the gas is released exceptionally slowly and uh, there was a, a very high selection pressure in the headspace of the silo. In Western Australia, the clinical approach is to first use a rapid test to determine phosphine resistance so that action can be taken as soon as possible. Insects are separated from the grain sample, dosed with a precise amount of phosphine, then left for half an hour. We'd hope to see in a susceptible strain of insects uh, that there's no life or appears to be no life. They're all knocked down after the 30 minutes. In a resistant sample, we'd see some life, so some normalcy in the insects. The insect sample from the Wuban site was strongly resistant and indicated that urgent action was required. Rob Emery asked me if I would have a look at the situation on this particular farm. Michelle had already indicated that it was looking, starting to look very interesting. Um, and so I first went up to the farm and assessed the situation, discovered uh, that the fumig what fumigation practice was looked at the silos, looked at the hygiene around the farm and decided that it was possible that we could do a, an eradication of the insects on the farm. Proper hygiene and fumigation were maintained for the next couple of years. Empty silos cleaned and treated with diatomaceous earth. Silo seals were renewed and pressure tests conducted. And when filled with grain, the silos were fumigated using the correct procedures. The final result was that the strongly resistant beetles were eliminated. And what was even better news was that they'd been beaten by the fumigant they'd built a high resistance to, phosphine. The most important aspect of it was that although we eliminated the insects in the silos, we needed to check that the insects that were flying into the area were also not strong resistance. And so I put a, an environmental trap under the silos, which was essentially a large rubbish bin full of grain, and sieved the insects out of that um, on a regular basis and submitted them to the labs for Michelle to test and found that there was no strong resistance left in the insects that were flying into the farm. 
The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's resistance test is the more exacting procedure, used to determine both frequency and level of resistance, and it was the next step the WA team used to document the Woobin experience. The FAO established this test 30 years ago, and it's been the accepted international standard since. It's a discriminating dose test, so we, we put a certain dose in to the same sort of number of insects, 100 per replicate of three, um, for a 20 hour test. And then that tells us whether or not that population has strong resistance. I inject a sample that I take out of that desiccator into the, the gas chromatograph and, and just make sure that that reading is what I expect for the concentration required. The lab's confirmation that the strongly resistant population of rust red flower beetle had been eliminated was the news the WA team had been hoping for. Oh, extremely pleased, uh, <laughs> to put it mildly. Uh, it's the first time I believe that it's been recorded that we've eliminated the insects from the farm and the environment. Certainly there have been a lot of fumigations over east where the strong resistance has been eliminated from the storage, but in this case we've proved that it's the insects are no longer existing around the farm environment itself. Helping to underpin the program's work is a national grain insect resistance database currently holding the results of more than 60,000 tests. Between 1985 and 1990, samples were mainly recorded in WA and New South Wales, and weak resistance to phosphine was already widespread. In the next 10 years, more sites were sampled, and weak resistance was now found in most locations around the nation. And from Queensland to South Australia, strong resistance was building. As well as tracking resistance, the National Phosphine Resistance Monitoring Program developed better fumigation protocols and recommended changes to phosphine labels. These changes removed incorrect practice and provide the basis for more improved management of strongly resistant insects. Yeah, well this work obviously highlighted the, the need for continued research and development on phosphine resistance because it shows that not only were we able to detect a problem, we were able to deal with that problem as well. But we also learn from that resistance and the different resistances that are found around, around Australia that um, we have resistance management strategies that allow us to advise farmers and bulk handlers on how best to use phosphine to avoid resistance developing in future. As was the case at Woburn, repeated incorrect fumigations are the biggest risk to maintaining phosphine as an effective control of grain storage insects. And a GRDC survey in 2010 found only 36% of grain growers using phosphine applied it correctly. Phosphine resistance doesn't mean to say you can't control grain insects. It just means that you have to be better at your fumigation, that there must be no gas leakage below the uh, required concentration for the correct length of time. And so controlling very strong resistance is simply a, a means of increasing the, the time and the, the dose rate to control the very strong resistant insects. Once they've been controlled, then you can go back to normal fumigation practice um, on your own farm. Used correctly, phosphine will give grain growers many more years of reliable insect control in their sealed grain storages and fewer episodes such as Woobin.